Hello, my name's Frank. This is Frankly Speaking. These are English lessons for learners at all levels. If you are an elementary learner, I suggest you go into the YouTube settings and lower the speed of the video. If you're more advanced learner, you can uh, skip through some parts of the video because this lesson is about the present simple. It's quite easy, but we will discuss it in a more complex way for higher le level learners. Um, Let's start first, before we move into the, the grammar of this, um, something I want you to keep in mind if you're a student who wants to improve your level, um, improve your scores in IELTS or TOEFL, FCE, CAE, etc. Um, these are some things I suggest you keep in mind when, you, um, when you're communicating in general. Um, is the speech that you're making, is it complex or is it simple? Um, are you giving uh, more complicated answers, longer answers with more interesting information? Or are you giving very simple answers? Um, if I ask you, where do you live? Um, if you just say, I live in Tokyo, maybe that's a simple answer. Um, Another thing to keep in mind is, are you speaking in a dynamic and flexible way or are you being repetitive? Um, if I ask a few questions from you and you answer them using the same verb forms, um, the same uh, vocabulary, then you're being repetitive. This is not good if you're aiming for a high score in any of the um, big tests like IELTS. So you should try to be dynamic, be flexible, give a lot of variety when you're speaking. Uh, the third thing I'd like you to keep in mind is are you speaking accurately? That means are you making a few mistakes or are you being inaccurate or making a lot of mistakes? Okay. Keep these things in mind throughout this lesson and throughout other lessons and in general when you're communicating an idea. Okay, let's get started. So um, we're going to start this with a bit of MFP. So you know MFP is meaning, form, and pronunciation. If you're a higher level English speaker, you might just skip through this part and go to the short questions or just look through and see if there's anything you forget. So we'll start with MFP first. Um, after going through that, we'll look at some short answers, some questions that you would answer in a short way. Um, then I'm going to talk about the present simple with uh, telling stories. And uh, then we'll go into some longer answers, some questions that expect longer answers. Um, and finally, uh, for this lesson, we're going to look at an IELTS speaking part two. Um, that's one where you need to speak on your own for between one and two minutes. Um, so let's get started with some um, meaning here. Uh, look at this photo and what I'd like you to do is try to think of maybe three things you can say about this photo using the present simple and focusing on habits and facts, okay? I'd like you to pause the video. Um, you don't need to write these down, but if you want to, you can. Uh, just pause the video and think of three statements you might say about this picture and focus on habits and facts, okay? I'll give you about 10 seconds. Okay. So what we have here is two people in a kitchen and they're cooking at the moment. So um, let's see, what could you say about this? What can you say about this picture using just present simple and focusing on habits and facts? Uh, here are some simple ideas you might give. You might say, they cook together every weekend. Um, 
The walls of their kitchen are white. They enjoy cooking together. These are all present simple um, sentences and these are simple ideas. Uh, elementary level, you might be using some sentences like this. Now some more complex ideas with more difficult language in them. You might say, cooking is a difficult skill to master, but it's a great way to bring people together. Or, cookware, like pots and pans, come in different sizes, and a trained chef knows exactly what to use, oh, sorry, when to use the right tools in the kitchen. Uh, in this case, you can see all of the cookware around the kitchen. And it's a comment about uh, these people and a comment about cooking in general. So this is a good um, comment to make about a picture like this. Okay, so looking at meaning. We're first going to focus on habits and facts. Um, starting with habits, what are habits? Habits are actions that we do routinely. That means we do it at some frequency. Um, these actions might be frequent. Uh, we do them frequently, like maybe once a day or every hour. Uh, like I wash my hands every hour or um, I take the bus once a day. Some of these actions might be infrequent. Um, we do them infrequently, like once a month, or every time I see my aunt and uncle. Um, when, when do, for example, when do you go to, um, when do you go to your hometown? Um, I go to my hometown every time I see my aunt and uncle. Or when do you uh, play cards? That's better. When do you play cards? Every time I see my aunt and uncle, we play cards together. Habits are also actions that happen at a specific time, every day or once a week. Um, when do you wake up? At 8 a.m. Uh, when do you go to bed? At midnight. Okay, these are all habits we have. Then we have facts. Facts are statements that are always true. For example, if you're describing places or objects, you would be speaking in facts, with facts. Uh, if you're describing nature and instinct, um, for example, bears hunt um, small animals. That would be nature or instinct, depending on how you see it. The sky is blue, that's nature. Facts about people or country, like um, uh, Usain Bolt is the fastest runner, or countries, um, Japan is in Asia. And also facts include your feelings and opinions. Anytime you say, I think, or I feel, or I am sad, uh, those are feelings and opinions. Um, I agree with you, I disagree with you. Those are facts and we use the present simple for those. All right, form. I'll uh, fly through this quickly. If you are a lower level learner, please pause the video um, to, sit, to, to look at the information. So present simple form, affirmative. We might say, I have a large television in my room. So the verb is in infinitive form. She wants to go shopping or brown bears are dangerous. Negative, um, I don't have a large television. Uh, she doesn't want to go shopping. Brown bears aren't dangerous. Okay, so we have affirmative, I have a large television. Negative, I don't have a large television. Question form, with the same information. Do I have a large television? I guess. Does she want to go shopping? And are brown bears dangerous? These are three um, present simple sentences, but they, they have something different about them. Uh, in the first two, 
we have the structure of an any verb except to be. The last sentence about brown bears in each one is using the verb to be, and in those, the negative is a little bit different from the others, as is question form. Okay, let's look at structure. So for the affirmative ones, we have subject, verb, predicate. Predicate just means the rest of the sentence um, about the subject. So for example, I have a large television in my room. The subject is I, the verb is have, the predicate is this information about the subject, I. Now, if you use he, she, or it, you need to add an S or sometimes an ES at the end of the verb. For example, she wants to go shopping. In negative form, we have subject plus don't or doesn't plus verb plus predicate. So the subject in the first sentence, I don't have, don't have, and the predicate is a large television. If it's I, you, we, or they, we use don't or do not. If the subject is he, she, or it, we use doesn't, doesn't. Now question form, it's do or does plus the subject plus the verb plus the predicate. So in the first question here, do I have a large television? We have do, the subject is I, the verb is have, and the predicate is a large television. So do I have a large television? With I, you, we, and they, we use do, but if the subject is he, she, or it, we use does. Okay, I have um, a little exercise for you here. I'd like you to find the mistakes in these sentences. So, if you will, please pause the video, write these down, write them correctly, or you can do it by speaking. And um, in about 10 seconds, I'll show you the answers. Okay. So, let's look at these. I not have, no, I don't have, or I do not have any sisters. Number two, my room has big windows. Three, I am 20 years old. Four, my friend has a cute dog. And five, my sister has three children. Hopefully you got all of them correct, but maybe you made a mistake with have and has, or in the negative, maybe you forgot don't or you used doesn't. Be careful. All right, let's move on to pronunciation. Uh, generally, the pronunciation of the present simple is quite easy, but when you add an S at the end of a verb, and when do we do that? We do that when we use he, she, or it. When you do that, the pronunciation of the S can be the sound of an normal s sound or it might be the sound of z which is similar to the sound of a b Bzzz. let's look at some examples and why we do this so starting with s we do this with words that end in unvoiced consonants unvoiced means you don't use your voice, your voice, sorry, when you say these sounds. So if you place your fingers on your neck here, you shouldn't feel any vibration when you say these sounds. 
For example, ch or t. You don't use your voice in these sounds. You use your mouth only. When you use your mouth and not your voice in these uh, unvoiced consonants, then you're going to add the S as a S sound. So, for example, the sound K is unvoiced. K. And some similar, some words that end in that are locks, walks, and socks. Next we have T, T, hats, bats, stats. Okay. Next, that's an F sound. Laughs, staffs, coughs. Okay, next we have the P sound like P, P. Pops, stops, reps. Okay, next we have this symbol here. It's, a, it's the sound of a TH sometimes. There's two sounds for TH, but in this case, this is an unvoiced sound. You make it just with your tongue, some air, and your teeth, like this. It's almost silent. So it sounds like Maths, baths, moths. Okay, those are unvoiced sounds, unvoiced consonants, sorry. Now, the z sound is made with, you guessed it, voiced consonants. Well, when words end in voiced consonants. Some voiced consonants, these are these are sounds that you can feel your throat vibrating with, like b, 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 b. You use your throat with a sound. So this sound, uh, these words then become cabs, tabs, stabs. Okay. Another one is r, r like cars, wars, or stores. Another one is g, g, tags, bags, wags. Okay, another one, we have l, l, like walls, walls, pills, and fools. Okay, next we have mmm, mmm, stems, rams, comes. And next we have mmm, like moons, stuns runs and finally we've got this v. now this is the other sound that we make with some th words this one is unvoiced but this other one is voiced um, the most common word that you might know with this is mother, mother. You should feel vibration here, mother. So we've got bathes, clothes, loathes. All right. Let's move on to some short answers here. Now these are um, questions that require some short answers. For example, I have here some questions about habits and facts, and I'd like you to answer these with some short answers. So um, I'll give you 10 seconds. Uh, please pause the video 
and answer these questions in your own words and use this present simple when necessary. Okay, I'll give you 10 seconds. Okay, all right, now we're going to look at some example answers, but uh, these answers are going to start being more simple at first. So I'll answer numbers one, two, and three with more simple answers and by the end, the questions four, five, and six will be more complex. So I'll show you what I mean by simple and complex. First question, what time do you wake up? I wake up at 7 a.m. every morning. That's a simple answer. Next question, how often do you visit the dentist? I try to visit the dentist at least twice a year. This is a little more complex. I used try to visit and at least twice a year. Where do you usually go shopping? I mostly go shopping with my parents, but sometimes I go with friends. Little more complex. I've got mostly, I mostly go shopping and I sometimes I go with friends. These are both frequency adverbs and you use them with the present simple. And I'm also using but here to connect two ideas. Next one, what are some devices you own? I have quite a lot of devices. My smartphone is my own, but I also have a laptop, wireless headphones, and a tablet, which I share with my brother. Now this is much more complex than how I answered number one. Next one, how many family members live with you? Well, I live with my siblings, my parents, and my grandparents, Although, my cousin spends some weekends with us too. This is more complex and I'm using although here, again, connecting two parts or two different ideas with a connector. And finally, who is your best friend? My best friend is an old classmate from secondary school. We hang out all the time, right? Maybe five is more complex than six, I'd say, but this is also a good answer. We have some specific vocabulary when you're talking about friendship, uh, old classmates, hang out. All right. Okay, let's talk about the present simple and telling stories. Um, we use the present simple to, to make stories more interesting, especially when the story has a surprise ending. Now for, uh, for this, I want you to imagine that I'm back here somewhere sitting at a table in this cafe. This is not me. All right. Um, let's see here. Okay. So. Uh, I'm going to first tell the story using the, the typical past simple, uh, past tense way of telling a story. Um, for example, uh, last week I went to a caf uh, cafe. Um, I was with some friends. We were looking at our phones. I wanted, um, I, I was interested in uh, getting a, a tat tattoo so I was looking through Instagram um, I uh, I found a really cool page and 
This guy had so many tattoos. Um, when I looked up, I noticed that the same model was sitting right in front of me. Okay, that's one way to tell a story that happened in the past. Uh, it's a, it's fine. It's good. Um, maybe it's not so interesting for the person listening if you tell the story that way. So I'm gonna write. I'm gonna tell the story a different way using present simple to make it a little more interesting. Uh, so. Uh, Last week, I went to a cafe with some friends. All right, I'm setting the time here in the past. Um, I uh, look at my phone and I start um, looking through Instagram. Um, I saw a, a guy's page who had so many tattoos. So I tell my friend I'm definitely getting a tattoo this weekend. Uh, next thing you know, I look up and the same model is sitting right in front of me. Okay. There are some past simple in this uh, past simple verbs in this but it's not entirely past simple and I've used the present simple to make you um, it's like you're in the story with me while I'm telling you this story and it makes um, telling stories a lot more interesting and also shows that you have a higher English level because this is not something that elementary students usually do all right so with that in mind Telling a story using present simple makes a story more engaging, interesting for the listener. It's more casual, it's more conversational, it's more typical of the way we speak to each other in English. And it's more focused on the story as a whole instead of on each part. If you use the past simple and you say, yesterday I was in a coffee shop, I sat down, I opened my phone, I was looking through Instagram. It sounds like you're telling me about all of these actions, but when you tell a story using present simple, you are putting me in the story. It's more focused on the story, not on each part of the story. Okay, now we're at the long answers part of the of the lesson, so these questions require a bit longer answers. Now, I'm going to give you some time to uh, practice speaking or writing down the answers that you would give for these questions. But before we do that, I, I would like you to um, consider something. And this is uh, hopefully this will be useful for you when writing your answers. Now, um, when we need to give longer answers, sometimes people run out of things to say. You don't know what to say next. Um, and people ask me what is an easy way to extend my answers. And the easiest way that you can extend your answers is to think of um, easy questions to make the answer longer. For example, number one is talk about your daily routine. Um, if you just say at 8 a.m. I wake up, at 10 a.m. I go to work, at 11 a.m. I have lunch, at 2 p.m. I have a nap. It's very repetitive, it's very simple, and you're only focusing on the time and the action. So like you to think about who, who do you do the action with? Who, who um, do you go to work with? Um, what, what do you do for work, for example? Or what school do you go to? Um, where, where are you going? Where do you do the action? 
when do you do it? Well, if you're saying the time, you're saying when, but maybe you want to uh, be more specific. I go to school, uh, I, I, I go early to school um, between August and May, but in the summer, um, I wake up later than, than 6 a.m. Um, um, why? Let's do why first. Why do you do certain things? Um, at uh, 6 p.m. I go to the gym because I want to get fit. I want to look good. Um, and how? How can be how do you do it? Um, like how do you get to school or how do you get to work? Or it can be how many, how much, like how many people do you go with? How much time does it take you to get there? Um, how big or small something is? If you're describing your school, how big is your school? How small is it? Or um, um, how long is your journey? You know, there's lots of questions that you can, uh, let's say sub questions you can answer in these, uh, for, for these. All right, so I'll give you, um, you can just pause the video, answer the questions, um, and uh, try to come up with good long answers that use complex ideas and use the present simple especially. Okay. All right. For the last part here, IELTS practice. Um, if you are doing IELTS, this is great. If you're not doing IELTS, this is also useful for you. You don't need to be doing IELTS to do these kinds of tasks. They're really very, very useful. Um, they're, the tasks are made for, for you to um, be forced to speak for a long time. So you have basically a task with some sub questions in that. This one is describe a day of the week that is special to you. And you should say what you do that day, who you spend time with, why this day is particularly special, and talk about an experience you recently had on that day. So you have what, who, why, and an experience. So maybe you can use the present simple to tell the story. Okay, you have uh, some time, so pause the video take some time to answer the question okay hopefully you found this video useful if you wrote a nice IELTS part two answer, you can copy it into the comments section and um, we'll take a look at it and see how, um, how complex, how simple it is and um, just keep practicing and check out my next video coming soon. All right, thank you very much. Bye bye.